Am I glad to see you? Before I begin, I just have to tell you that two days ago, wow, this thing is loud. Two days ago, I was in Sheridan, Wyoming, addressing a crowd of state foresters from Wyoming and Montana, and arborists, tree service people. And my plane was late, so as I finally made it to the convention center, I walked past through the parking lot, all of these giant pickup trucks. I mean, these things were massive. You know, eight doors and 16 wheels and tea party bumper stickers. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I better just come clean. So I went in and, and my talk began right away and I said, okay, I know that you think I'm a Easterner being from Omaha and that you're sizing me up. So I'm just gonna tell you right off the bat, if you haven't noticed, I'm wearing Birkenstocks. And on my way to the airport yesterday, I listened to Jimi Hendrix and Frank Zappa in my car. I drink espresso every morning. Sometimes I drink green tea, no, it's true. And even though I was disappointed I was heartbroken to find out that he's not a socialist and he's not a secret Muslim. I voted for Obama anyway. Okay, we can start the tape now. Okay, good. I want to do two things in the next 10, 8 minutes. I want to teach anyone who's interested how to plant a tree for good. The second thing is I want to teach anyone who is interested how to become one with the cosmos. So let's start there. Seven minutes is plenty of time for both of those things. All right, so for the first thing you have to do to become one with the cosmos is you have to learn to take a nap in a strange place. Let me give you an example. When I was in graduate school, I was in Cairo, and uh, I like to sometimes skip my afternoon uh, seminar and take a nap. Now, you might be thinking, where can you take an afternoon nap in Cairo? Because Cairo is very busy. But around the corner, there was a 10th century mosque with a big wall around it. So I found a little carpeted area and laid down against the wall and took a snooze. And I don't know how long I slept, but when I woke up, I discovered that I was right in the middle of a Sharia law class. That all of these young men were sitting around me on these carpets, and over in the corner, a little ways away, was their teacher, the imam, and he was sitting on a stool. And this guy has been in that mosque since it was built in the 10th century. I mean, this guy was easily 900 years old. And I was laying there, and I was in that hypnagogic state, you know, I just learned from my son, who's become an expert on altered states of consciousness. He's in ninth grade. I wonder what they're, I, you know, public schools, right? I don't know what's going on there. The hypnagogic state, that's when you're just falling asleep and you're just waking up and your brain does all these weird things, right? Well, that is really an excellent time to learn something. So I was just waking up and all of these guys were sitting around me and, you know, speaking Arabic, you know, and... I could catch a little bit of it. And I realized, first of all, I didn't realize where I was at first, but I thought this is incredible because even though I was in school learning a good scholarly method that requires uh, a, a sort of a detachment, you know, good scholarly method in the Western tradition, these guys were learning their subject from the inside. And in fact, the longer they sat there in that medieval mosque with their thousand year old teacher, they were becoming the thing that they were studying. They were becoming the tradition. So after years as a university professor where I learned all about gridlock and the abuse of power and the value of uh, academic freedom, which let me tell you was rare. This is being edited, right? Okay. Um, I found a new teacher. This is my imam. Ladies and gentlemen, Quercus, Macrocarpa oliviformis. I have become a disciple 
of this tree and her daughter, Quercus macrocarpus Toshka. And I call her Toshka because that is the Ponca name for the Baroque. I mean, come on. What does a sweaty, Swiss, white, pasty guy who invented binomial nomenclature? I mean, I like Linnaeus just as much as the next guy. But what does he know? This is Tashka. This is what the Ponca called her. She, she was born just a few miles from here. Uh, this is her mother. I've become the disciple of this tree, and I've developed a whole brand new school of yoga based on learning from this tree. Let me demonstrate. You have to take a nap. Uh, this is called uh, upward, comma, facing oak. And as, I'm, as you're laying here, uh, you might hear a vireo, you might see some of those beautiful um, caterpillars of the hair streak butterfly, which feeds on Baroque, it needs Baroque. And you might even see that vireo catch some of those little crawly things to feed her babies, which have just reached the age to digest a whole caterpillar. So you're laying here and, and you know, beneath you, you can feel the earth moving. The earth is alive. There are trillions of creatures in the soil that depend on that oak and upon whom that oak depends for life. You might even feel a tick crawling on your leg. They're not bad to get out, really. You just put down a, you know, if you're worried about that, put down a blanket. It's not bad, really. So here's the point. Everything that feeds on the oak needs the oak, and everything that the oak feeds, the oak needs. Because every one of these creatures is on a cycle, and the cycles mesh. And the cycles are determined by the position of the earth as it revolves around the sun. That's why if you want to plant an oak for good, if you want to plant a tree in your yard, Find a tree that is grown from acorns. These are acorns from this tree. Find acorns, or a tree that was grown from acorns or seeds from a wild tree near your home, and that's the tree that you should plant. And if you want to become one with the cosmos, Find a wild tree. Go to this tree or find a wild, a big wild tree like this one. And spend time there. Meet there with your friends. You know, fill out your absentee ballot. Do something, but spend time under this tree. Because during this election time, I want to say to you, yes, we can plant trees forward for change we can believe in, I hope. <laughs>